Hello. Hi, darling. Too many ships chasing too few cargoes. What? You're cracking up. Huh? Oh, it's just some Indian crew demanding their wages. I'll be having a couple of hours with Ian Andrews. I said we put him up, have a meal. Try not to be late. I'll try. How do you feel? The baby? So near the sea. There's something remotely romantic about the sea, you know? Thousands of people die in it every year. <laughs> Stevie's so cynical about everything. Oh, this would be fantastic for my studio. <gasps> oh, what about this for my trades? Separate rooms. Never the twain shall meet. <laughs> I've just forgotten it. Let's go and get a pint. Come on. Is Mark train? Oh, upstairs, all the way to the top, the room on the right. Careful with that, it's a train set. You got kids then? Yes, one very big one. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the corkscrew, love? 
in the box mark kitchen. I thought we said we wouldn't bring his things. There'll be another, Toby. They say the next two bereavement and divorce, moving house is the most traumatic thing you can go through. We gave him a name, Ray. I thought we said we wouldn't talk about it. I mean, he just should have been buried somewhere. Not... I thought it was best. I didn't want you coming out of a coma and having to deal with all that. I just want to know where he is. There'll be another, Toby. You can have my train set. <laughs> hmm? Just too soon after. See you there. Have you seen a ginger cat? Like this one? No. Uh, they used to disappear when the thorns had the house. Disappear all the time. Never knew what happened to them. Oh, we had our suspicions, though, didn't we? Hmm? I'm Louise. We've just moved in. We had our suspicions. What's your name? Leslie. I'm oh, pleased to meet you, Leslie. Mrs. Leslie. Did you know the people that lived here before? The Thorns. We were glad when they'd gone, weren't we? <laughs> weren't they very nice? Oh, we're glad they've gone. Did they have lots of children? Too many. Little monsters they were. Have you got children? No. Oh, just as well. They only bring you grief.
met the next door neighbour this morning. Mrs. Leslie. She is odd. In what way? I don't know, she's just odd. She's got lots of cats. I hate cats. She said that the children who lived here before were real monsters. I felt like saying I wouldn't have minded one little monster of my own. What else did you do today? I wonder what Toby would have grown up to be. An engine driver. Toby's dead. He's not going to grow up to be a little monster or anything else. We've got to just put him behind us. When? Not that night that... No, it can't have been there. What about the night that we had two? Well, you had two, but I had two. <laughs> what does it matter, Ray? Are you all right? What does it matter? I want you to take the greatest, greatest care. I want you to listen to the doctors this time. None of this going on your own. They're the experts. Ray, it's my body. You don't know what it's like to be lying there, flat on your back, being prodded and poked around by so-called experts. Now what happened last time? Everything they said, you did the opposite. Listen, all your stupid friends and read all those books on alternative childbirth. One book? I just don't want you losing this one. Be all, Mrs. Knight. You can get dressed now. My last obstetrician sent me for a scan after eight weeks. Sixteen weeks will be fine. I'd like to have the baby at home if that's possible. You can have him anywhere you like. In the garden, swinging from a chandelier. But don't you think it's a bit early to make these decisions? I read a book once that said it's important to choose early on. I read a book too, Mrs. Knight. A great many books. I'm just worried I might miscarry again. What are the chances? If you look after yourself, very good. If you don't, very poor. Mrs. Knight, you're a perfectly normal, healthy young woman. You're going to give birth to a normal, healthy baby. I'd let you know I was pregnant. I've got three of them here with the same problem. Come on, come on. Push, push. Push, push, push. Oh, don't take that down. Well, do you want me to paint round it? Painless and completely harmless. 
we had a scan before when I was pregnant, but all we could see then was a little white moon. Did you see more than a little white moon this time? Can you just move out of the way a little bit so I can see? Yeah, we can't see the school. <laughs> can't see anything. Be patient. There's nothing there. There's no baby there. But there must be. I mean, I can feel it kick. Perhaps there's something wrong with the machine. It's working perfectly well. You're just not pregnant, my love. If I'm not pregnant, then what is it I can feel moving inside me? My God. You're even bigger than you were yesterday. I can still feel him, Ray. You're going to see a specialist. I don't care how much it costs. And you're going tomorrow. Maybe it's their instruments that are wrong. How did you feel when you lost your baby? How did I feel? Yes. I felt responsible. As if it was my fault. And why is that? I was driving too fast and... Uh, I see. Normally, a phantom pregnancy has clinical causes. Gastroenteritis causing nausea and throwing up, etc. Now, your ovaries, tubes, and uterus all test fine. Your pelvis is normal. There is no clinical reason for this pregnancy to exist. So why does it? I specialize, Mrs. Knight, in psychosomatic disorders. There is a syndrome, pseudosiesis, its origins are psychosexual, and its symptoms are what we term hysterical. When a woman develops objective pregnancy signs in the absence of pregnancy, this sometimes happens because of the wish to be pregnant. I think in your case, the origin is the guilt you feel. You still desperately want to be carrying your baby. Then how come I tested positive? How come I can feel him kick? In the rain. You shouldn't be out in that state. My new neighbour. How do you do? Geoffrey Canfield is my name. You're expecting a happy event. Let me see. I see blue wool, lots of blue wool. Don't listen to him, he's always seeing wool. It's a boy. I'm never wrong. It's a gift. I've always had it. Gift of the gab. You want to take care of yourself. He's due any day. I do take care of myself, thank you. Oh, in my day, it wasn't decent for pregnant women to be seen out. But times change. Come on, before the rain starts. When cats wash their ears, it's never far off. See you again, I hope. And it's April, it always rains here in April. If I hadn't lost the baby, he'd be due now. 
Second week in April. But you did lose the baby. But what if I didn't? What if he's still there? <sighs> if it's him, I can feel moving inside me. You miscarried. He's not still there. Put your hand on him, Ray. All the doctors have said. But what do they know? I'm pregnant, I'm not pregnant. I'm blown up like a balloon because I feel guilty. God, I'm fed up with doctors and their opinions. It's all in your imagination. Is this my imagination? <laughs> I have his ghost inside me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I am not being ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, it's starting, Ray. It's starting. It's not starting. Uh, nothing is starting. Believe me, nothing oh, is starting. Oh, God. Oh, oh, Ray, get me to a hospital. Oh. Louise, what did I tell you? Down into your bottom. Grip onto your legs. Now, come on. Push down. Yes. Push down. Yes. That's good. Good. Yes. Now, push. Down that point. Push. Push, Louise. There's nothing but blood. There's nothing but blood. Is she all right? She's fine, Mr. Knight. She wasn't pregnant, you know. Yes, I do know. I'm at a complete loss to explain it.
price goes up every week. I see you've had the little fellow. Is that right? Disgraceful. Yes, Mr. Canfield, you're right. I'm never wrong. He died. Oh, I'm so terribly sorry. What can you do, and What can you do? Louise lost her baby. That's sad. May seem like the end of the world, but never is. Never is. You need somebody to talk to now, don't you? Oh, very much. I've been caretaker here for seven years. It's nice and warm. Warmer than at home. I lost my wife a few years ago. Emily was her name. She still comes back to me now and again. Your baby. Do you have a name? It's Toby. Let me see. Toby isn't gone, you know. He's just hiding. Sometimes, you know, they do hide. They like to play games. But he was never old enough. Well, they grow on the other side, you know. Let me see. Oh, yes. He's very near to us at this moment. I see him joined to you very clearly. I see a long golden thread joining you and him. He's with us now. <laughs> He's laughing. No, he isn't laughing. It's so difficult to know with babies sometimes. He's crying. Did, did somebody hurt him? They have such tiny voices, that's the problem. Someone hurt him and he wants he needs to be loved. <laughs> Who's Lou? I'm Lou. It's a name my mother gave me. I'm the one who hurt him. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry.
What's the matter? What happened? <laughs> She says it's been going on since she got home. Yeah, yes, I think that's best too. All right. I'll explain that to her. Thank you. Good night. Dr. Parker says there's a, a crisis team. What they do is they come round. I don't need a crisis team. Please listen to me. These are professionals. They're psychiatrists. I don't need psychiatrists. Why don't you believe me? I don't want to. I don't need to. You'll be going in as a voluntary patient. There's no question of anybody locking you up or anything like that. if I don't go involuntary. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I need to be at home. Please, Louise. Just do it for me. I mean, don't think this isn't painful for me, too. with me, I couldn't. Ray, what are you doing? No, Ray, there's a zombie! No! It's for the best. It's for the best. I've thought of a better way to cure this madness. We make a baby. A proper baby. Come on. It's just one of that old crone's cats. Come on. It's a rust bucket. Can't believe the Taiwanese Interpol department can't see a rust bucket. Mm -hmm. Well, tell Ken and Brunei that the bill of lading was a forgery. The containers are probably full of tin cans or something. Yeah. 
All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Can you believe it? It's just a clever rust bucket fraud. Some overinsured heap of junk with a valuable cargo gets scuttled. Mm -hmm. all the time. Thanks for doing this, love. I'm sure you're going to be all right. Yes, Ray, I am not due for... Do you have to write it down every time he kicks? I should be feeling ten movements every twelve hours. That way, at least I know the placenta's functioning properly. Mm, you should have my job. You'd be good at it. Now, don't forget to go and see Dr. Getty. Ray, I don't need to. No, you may not need to, but our son does. Hmm? So that's the little fella. He's sucking his thumb, isn't it sweet? Hmm. Some women revel in the mystery of childbirth. I just don't want any more surprises. Mm. All problems behind us now, eh? Mm. <coughs> Mrs. Leslie, as I'm pregnant, please will you keep your cats away from the house? And don't you know their urine carries a disease that is harmful to unborn babies? Thank you. Never harm their own. Toby? Toby? Get off! Shoo! Go on! Go on! Shoo! <sighs> Mrs. Leslie, will you please keep your cats out of my house? Cats will go where they please. They've a will of their own, won't you? It did something in my kitchen, in my food. Cats wouldn't do that. Cats are clean, unlike people. Well, I have a will of my own too, Mrs. Leslie, and if I ever catch any of your cats in my house again, I'll kill them, by God. Well, keep your windows shut. Right. 
I'll get help. Stay here. No, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you. Thank you. She's pregnant. She needs some help. You need a doctor. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Leslie, just let me come in. If I'm with somebody, then maybe I won't try to attack me. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Leslie, could I have Mr. Canfield's telephone number? Well, he won't do you much good. They took him away two months ago. What? He's been going for years. And all that contacting the dead, did it? The dead wanted to be contacted, they wouldn't die. Oh, please, Mrs. You've got a cheek! <laughs> That's uh, some story, Mrs. Knight. I thought these delusions, these fantasies were behind you. They are not delusions. He's always been there. It's just that I learnt to ignore him. And now it is as though he is jealous and he wants to hurt the baby. And why do you think he's taking it out on you now? I don't know. It's as though he's been waiting. Mrs. Knight, ghosts don't exist. And even if they did, I don't think they could inflict physical harm on us. No? Well, take a look at this, then. How did this happen? He has been kicking me all day and all night. I mean, do you think I'd make this up? Please, you've got to help me. I don't want to lose this baby. You're not going to lose her. Stay there and try to relax. I'll be back in a minute. I want you to get me Mrs. Knight's GP, Dr. Parker, on the phone for me, please. Certainly. Tell him I have reason to believe that Mrs. Knight might be a danger to herself and her baby. <laughs> Mrs. Knight. I want you to go back into hospital. You don't believe me, do you? My concern is not only for you, but for your baby. Do you think I'm doing this to myself? <gasps> Why does nobody believe me? Mrs. Knight. Thank <laughs> you. 